Hi friends, it's Gretchen here again today to teach you about symbiosis. And you've probably heard about this in your science class and thought, oh my gosh, it sounds so confusing and it's super involved, but I promise you it's very easy and I'm here today to help you understand. So symbiosis is uh, a relationship between organisms that live in or interact within the same environment. And there are three ways that they can interact. I'm not going to talk about predators and prey today, although I know that that is probably the one interaction that you're very familiar with, one attacking the other, trying to run uh, for freedom and to save itself. But we're going to talk about three things today, M, C, and P. So mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. So that is the three way that organisms who live around each other interact. Mutualism means that they both benefit. So for example, let's say a bird flies down and lands on a zebra. Well, the bird is landing on the zebra so that it can feed. It's hungry. And there are little organisms on the fur of the zebra. So the bird's eating away, filling its stomach. So that's a win. That's a benefit for the bird. Well, the zebra in the process is getting cleaned. It's like a car wash for an animal. So he's very happy and feeling fresh, and so that's a benefit and a win for him. So that relationship is a win-win. It's mutual mutualism. So the second way that organisms interact is, we had mutualism, commensalism. And that means one organism benefits while the other is neutral. Nothing good, nothing bad happens. So for example, how about a fish? You've seen Finding Nemo, a clownfish. He lands and lives in a sea anemone. And this anemone is not affected. It doesn't hurt or benefit itself, but the clownfish gets to stay nice and safe and have a place to live um, free of predators and get a good night's sleep. So that would be an example where one benefits and the other, nothing really happens. Or how about a woodpecker? that is flying around and decides it's hungry, so it stops on a tree, pecks a hole, and it gets to eat. Well, the tree still stands and nothing really happens to it. So that would be an example where one benefits, the woodpecker, and the tree is not harmed. And I'll even tell you, sometimes that could be mutualism because if another animal goes to live inside the hole, then both benefit. But the tree itself, nothing good or bad happened. So that's why we use it as an example for commensalism. All right, so we've done mutualism and commensalism. And so now we're on the third one, which is parasitism. And you might have heard that word before, parasite. They're not very good. They don't have a good name. And the reason that is, is because they harm. So although the parasite benefits, it actually hurts the host, whatever it lands on or touches. So we're going to talk today about an example of fleas. And you know that those might land on your dog and your dog gets poorly affected and could get really sick. But the flea is happy because it gets to eat. So that would be an example where one is benefiting while the other is unfortunately harmed. It's good to note here that they don't want to harm it too bad because then what happens? It runs out of food. So you don't want to kill what's feeding you. But while you're feeding, it is harming at some time. Uh, for people, an example would be bed bugs. They like the skin that's coming off of your bodies as it dies and new skin grows. But in the meantime, they're hurting your body. But of course, they don't want to hurt you too bad because they want you to stay around so that they always have food. So that would be another example where they are benefiting and we are actually getting harmed. So we've made it through our three symbiotic relationships, mutualism, where both are benefiting, commensalism, where one benefits, the other is neutral, and parasitism, where one benefits and the other is harmed. Now remember, at the beginning of the video, I told you that there was a fourth way that organisms could interact, and that if you stuck around for the video, the end of the video, I would share it with you. So we're at that point now, and I want to share with you mimicry is another way that they could interact. And I, I know you're thinking, that sounds familiar. It sounds like mimic. 
where you are almost Simon Says. So you're doing the actual uh, motion or whatever action might be occurring from someone in front of you. And so an example would be a poisonous snake. And he is obviously very successful because people are afraid of him. Uh, he can cause death. Uh, so he's pretty powerful in the animal kingdom. But as you know, there are snakes that are not poisonous. But guess what? They survive too because of mimicry. And they're not actually interacting with each other, but alongside each other. Like I said, Simon says they're like twins. And so the snake that isn't poisonous will act just like the poisonous one to trick people into thinking he's poisonous so they'll leave him alone. And then he lives a nice long life. So now you actually know the secret fourth way that organisms interact, and it's called mimicry. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson on symbiosis. Stay tuned, and until next time, have a good day.